And our lawmakers are back in Washington getting the latest updates on the conflict with Iran. And joining us live from Washington is Congresswoman Debbie Lesko of Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. What are your thoughts at, at Iran striking back at the United States? Well, first of all, I want to say that I totally support President Trump's actions. Soleimani was a terrorist, and he was designated that by the Obama administration. So everybody kind of knew that Iran was going to strike back. And from what I hear, there's no casualties of American soldiers or citizens. And so maybe they want to de-escalate this whole thing. And I also want to say that I would encourage everyone to pray for our servicemen and service women over there and thank them for what they are doing for protecting our country. Yes, uh, Congresswoman, listen to this. The, uh, the Iranian leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, calls a strike a slap in the face to the U.S., says a military hit is not enough and that the American presence in the region should come to an end. Do you have a response to that? Does this affect our presence there? Well, you know, Iran has been after America and Israel for literally years, and so we know they're an enemy. We know that many of their back militias are terrorist groups. We know that Soleimani was in charge of ordering 600 American soldiers were killed under his rule and his orders. And so this was a bad guy. This was a known terrorist under the Obama administration, and there's a stark difference between the Obama Obama administration and the Trump administration. The Trump administration is keeping America safe. Unlike under Obama when he said there's red lines that can't be crossed and then he let them be crossed, Trump is like he's not going to fool around with people that continue to kill American soldiers, American citizens. He warned them that if you kill an American citizen, we are going to fight back. And he did. And I thank him for that. Congresswoman Lesko, do you think that because some of the missiles missed, it was done intentionally? It's hard for me to know because I'm not there and I'm not in the minds of the Iranian leaders, but it sure seems like it. From what I've heard, the Iranians certainly have the capability to strike these nearby Iraqi military bases more accurately. And maybe this is a sign combined with one of their leaders' tweets that they want to de-escalate this. And so, you know, President Trump has said he does not want to get into a war with Iran. However, he has also said that if you kill American citizens or American soldiers, you are going to pay. And that's exactly what he did. He did what he said he was going to do. And he is strong in national defense. And you know what really bothers me is that Speaker Pelosi, who's, you know, number two in line after the vice president to replace the president, says on a Twitter that she basically, while American troops are being attacked, she's dissing the United States and the president, not supporting our soldiers. This is really unconscionable and really shows the difference between Republicans and Democrats on this issue. And what's your response to her attempt to bring forward a War Powers Act that would give Congress more control in this situation? You know, I think she, it, it would show her cards. It would show what Democrats, I, I actually hope she doesn't do it, but in a way I hope she does because it will show again to the American people the stark difference between Democrat leadership and Republican leadership. Democrat leadership, they paid Iran. Remember under the Obama administration, they paid Iran for appeasement. Well, that sure didn't work. In fact, as Ted Cruz said, I think last night, maybe those missiles that were shot at, at the bases, the military bases in Iraq, were paid for with U.S. taxpayer dollars supplied by the Obama administration. So, you know, if she does this resolution, I think it's a huge mistake, not only for the country, but for her party, because it's going to show the stark contrast between protecting America and America's citizens, as the Trump does and Trump administration does, and the Democrats who just want to do this appeasement, which hasn't worked. 
Uh, Congressman Leska, we've been talking a lot about what's going on overseas, but of course we'll bring back to impeachment. Nancy Pelosi still holding on to those articles. It, this is just craziness. Can I say this? I'm on the Judiciary Committee and the Rules Committee. In Judiciary Committee, I have heard people one after the other, my Democratic colleagues, say how much of an emergency it was that we passed these articles of impeachment before Christmas because it was a national security. Oh, how terrible it was. And then she holds on to them. I mean, I hope the American people see this for what it is. It was nothing but politically motivated. They had no evidence of impeachable offenses against the President of the United States, yet the House pushed it through and now they have the audacity to say the Senate isn't calling witnesses when Republicans like myself asked for witnesses in the House, we asked for witnesses in Judiciary Committee, and the Democrats rejected us? Give me a break. Well, Congresswoman Lesko, thank you for your time. We hope to talk to you again soon here on American Agenda.